Hello and welcome. I haven't done one of these in a long, long time, so I might as well get started. How's it going? My name is Cade and I want to die. How's it going, friends? Uh, well, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial as uh, requested by people for a long time, and I've always put it aside because I'm really good at doing stuff like that. Alright, let's get started. So, uh, this tutorial is probably going to be based on... Uh, I would assume, uh, freaking some facial movements of any kind or whatever. So I'm gonna use um, a more popular rig that uh, is used by a fair amount of people. I'm gonna use Skibbs's rig. Yeah. So this is the this is the rig I used in Reality Concept Five. If you guys recognize it, uh, honestly, out of every freaking uh, rig that I've used in the series so far. This was by far the most easy one to use. Like, this was just freaking phenomenally, phenomenally, like, convenient in every which way. <coughs> so, <coughs> let's get started. So, a lot of people ask how I've made the movements as his tongue is on the ground. A lot of people ask how I was able to make the movements as realistic as I was. Well, it actually comes down to a couple certain factors. One was that I got a lot of these ideas from how watching not just um, like films or anything, but I've actually watched like animations that Skibs made every once in a while, and I would notice how he does his facial features, and I would realize that that's actually how they would look like sometimes. So what uh, what I like to do um, specifically is mess with the eyes. So the eyes have a very a very uh how do you call it and a very <sighs> sorry I didn't go to school so I don't know how to say things um <coughs> basically the eyes have a very specific way that they move around um, especially like like in real life there's actually if you have ever looked at like one object and then you notice like you're looking at like different parts of that said object your eye actually moves around a little bit when you do that and I incorporate that into the animation so let's say that Skibbs looks to the left okay so what uh, what I like to do is I like to keep the keyframes of the eye movements about three apart three spaces apart so a space in between each keyframe so they move so it moves pretty fast and it doesn't have to move slow or anything because that's not actually realistic in any way. When you look at um, an eye moving around, you hold on, guys. <clears throat> when you look at an eye moving around, you actually um, you actually watch and it kind of jitters almost. It's uh, it's it's not smooth. So. Anyone who tells you otherwise doesn't hasn't actually seen an eye move around. The only time I've ever seen an eye move around kind of smooth is if your eyes locked on something and you lock your head to it. But for the most part, uh, especially when you're looking around using your eyes, it, it's very jittery. So, so make your movements fast, essentially. Use linear for all eye movements. No exceptions, not, not even joking. Like, do never use any other transition for eye movements. <clears throat> so... Uh, a good thing to note is that when an eye moves to an object, so he's looking to the right of him, what uh, what needs to happen is that he kind of like looks at the object a little more, sort of, if if that makes sense. So let me just uh, let me just do that. Okay. <clears throat> so what will happen is uh, he'll look at the object a little more, basically. Oh, isn't that, isn't that glorious? <coughs> so, as you can see, so here's the keyframe where his eyes move to said object. Have another keyframe right after where the eyes move slightly like up or down or maybe a little more. Like that. And then make sure they're close together. See how much I'm moving it? Not even that much. Now it doesn't look the good like that good at right now, and it's mainly because he doesn't have any actual head movements going around or like his facial expressions or whatever. What really helps is to add blinking every once in a while. And the way I like to do my blinking is I like to have um, the eyes closing linear. So I will I'll show you this. Uh, 
So if we go to eyebrows, so the way that Skibs has his is that his eyebrows and his top eyelids are in folders. This is honestly, I recommend doing this for rigs in the future. It's very easy. So as you can see, I have the eyebrows and the eyelids moving at the same time. So always bring the eyebrows down with the blink. Oh my God. Okay. Always make sure that that doesn't happen either. So always bring the eyebrows down when he blinks as well, because it looks, it just looks better. So a little convenient tip, by the way, that I, uh, I learned when I was animating concept five is that if you're going to have a blink animation, if it's not already cop, if you don't, if you can't copy and paste it, then make the last keyframe for it already. So the, the, the keyframe where his eye opens up and then make the, the key, like place the keyframe where his eyes are going to close basically. So keyframe them together. All right. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that they're, they're the the closing eye animation is roughly like two there's a there's a gap of about two keyframe spaces between each one. And then you want to add a back animation to the keyframes where his eyes are closed. So ease out back. See? See how much more realistic that looks? Also, another thing that I like to do is I like to kind of move the eyelids around a little bit. So if you look at how the eyelids close in, see how when they're open, the eye, there's like a little gap between where the eyelid ends and the eyebrow begins and how like as it comes down, it like closes in that gap. So make sure that that gap is kind of closed in when you're, when you're animating the, uh, the blinking. So there you go. You got a loop, not a looping, but you got a pretty good blinking animation. And you can make it faster too. <coughs> now, the nice thing about this is that you can copy and paste it anywhere you want. Now, another rule that goes with animation is that you want to make sure that um, because animations are typically supposed to be more exaggerated than real life, you want to make sure that the uh, actual blinking is a lot more frequent than a normal person would usually blink because a normal person person would probably blink once every like 10 seconds I would assume I, I'm just basing I never pay attention to how often I blink but you can tell right so I would I would change that to once every five seconds in animation or maybe even like like that sort of <coughs> and Another cool thing that you can do is that when the pupils move, make them blink as well. Now don't do that all the time because then it just takes away from the experience sometimes. But especially when like they're kind of like if the character is zoned out at something, if they're watching uh, something go down, like say that, how to explain this? Let's say that, J let's say that Skibs is looking at James right now. And then all of a sudden, out of the corner of his eye, he sees something catches attention. So in those types of cases, make them blink while moving their eyes. Because it's kind of, it shows that they, they kind of snap out of their zoning state and something else grabs their attention. I don't know why that's the case that it shows that. I just know that it does. It's usually the best way of showing that some something is grabbing the attention of another person. Because <clears throat> I, I guess it shows a state of being zoned out otherwise. Um, and yeah, if a character is zoned out, don't have them looking at the, don't have them do that, uh, thing where they look, they look at like different parts of it. So there's, there's sub pupil movements, which are these ones, like the little ones. And then there's longer pupil or big pupil movements. So the major movements are the ones where they, they shift to an entirely different object. And then the sub movements are the ones where they basically look at that set of object in different places. So the sub movements are the ones that make it look the most realistic. The major movements are the ones that are more orientated based on exactly what your character is looking at. <coughs> so for the most part, you got to make sure that you uh, keep any eye related movements very quick and very sharp. They can't be slow. They can't be uh, grazed over and they can't be super over dramatic. For the most part, the blinking can be over dramatic, but the pupil movements have to be realistic. Like you're not going to have a freaking backing animation on a pupil because it just, it doesn't look right. Like if I did that right now, it 
it just it looks like it looks like he's shaking his eyes a little bit and it's not exactly the best thing to do so i would always keep pupil movements linear and it just it saves you time like it makes it everything a little less complicated <coughs> And then I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a big movement right here. So as you can see, he he's like the facial movements are looking pretty realistic now. And this is all simply from doing like maybe tiny sub movements or just blinking a certain way. Like it's it's always about mixing certain eye movements together. You want to make the character look human. And what does a human do? They blink, they move, they move their eyes around, they look at the object. Always make sure that you're doing that. And the way that I like to do my animations, especially with fight animations, is I'll do the bit like the movements, like the arms moving around and everything first, and then I will do all the facial animations because it actually gives you a lot more time to focus on what exactly they're like doing with their face and everything. <coughs> And you got to take advantage of being able to shrink the pupils of a person. So something that I did a lot in uh, Concept 5 was I shrank the eyes of Skibs. Oh god, not like that. <laughs> and make sure it's not goat eyes, like that. That's So when you shrink the eyes, it gives a look of either shock, fear, or like... Yeah, shock or fear. Or maybe worry. Yeah, worry is another one. So it gives, basically, it gives you an idea of what they're feeling. Because right now, you can tell that he's either shocked, or he's scared, or he's confused, or even disturbed, honestly. He looks like he's even disturbed. So, something like that would be very good. Um, bigger sized pupils uh, means, like, remorse, uh, happiness... Sort of. Kind of, yeah. Remorse and happiness, for the most part. It's not particularly prominent on Skibs' rig, because it's his is rigged a different way. But um, what really goes with stuff like that is if you bring up the eyelids and the eyebrows. Oh, that's not the, that's not the eyebrows. That's the pupils. <coughs> there we go. See, as you can tell, it's like a bit of remorse, happiness, sort of. Or like, in anime standards, you could be trying to look cute. But, um, yeah, for the most part, this is uh, how you do those types of, like, scenes where you're trying to convey emotion through their eyes. So... You would shr when you shrink the eye, you give a, a look of basically like fear, shock, confusion, disturbed, like being disturbed or whatever. And then when you make the eyes larger, you give a look of wonder and like happiness and like um, just amazement, like like basically more positive ones, right? Um, when you make the pupils normal size, though you can then convey looks of serious m moments, kind of. So more uh, based around, like, anger, for example. Or, like, just, like, I'm not, I'm freaking done with you, like, kind of like exhaustion, almost. So, a good, another good indicator of how to convey uh, emotions is by positioning the eyebrows. So when you position the eyebrows, you got to make sure you know where they're positioned. So in this case, right now, he doesn't... Let's say that I want to convey that he's tired, okay? Right now, he doesn't look tired. He just looks like meh, basically, right? So what you want to do is if you want to convey that he's tired, you shrink down... You bring down the eyelids quite a bit. So maybe like that. But you bring up the eyelids like that. Uh... I, I would say bring down the eyelids a little more, maybe. See? <laughs> so now it looks like he's tired, sort of. Sort of. 
Uh, let's say that you bring the eyebrows back down a bit. So, so yeah, so now it looks like he's kind of tired for the most part. There's other emotions tied to this, but if you really wanted to make it, if you really wanted to emphasize that he's tired even more, you could even do go the extra step and uh, droop an eyelid a little more. Like that, right? Um, but for the most part, uh, that's like, we'll just leave that be for now. Um, so, what, what else we got? We got, uh, what other motion should I work on? Oh, uh, sadness as well. So, sadness, uh, you gotta tilt the eyebrows up like this. So, tilting the eyebrows also really helps as well. Uh, so what you gotta do is, essentially, the best way to do it, <coughs> bring down the eye eyelids quite a bit, um, and bring down the eyebrows all the way to the top of the eyelids, so you can't see any gaps. Like, right here, as you can tell. That looks sad. He looks- he looks sad, and he's like, I haven't changed his mouth expression in any way. Hold on, I gotta fix my- my TV. Hold on, it's about to power off. Okay. He doesn't look sad in any way. Well, sorry, no, he looks sad. Sorry, what did I just say? I didn't change his mouth in any way, and he still- and he looks sad. You can tell that. Now, if I go the other step, and I bring up the eyebrows with the eyelids, Uh, let's do this. <coughs> oh god, no, that's not how you do it. Uh, let's do that. Uh, eh, well, that's more or less a look of happiness, but we'll, we'll get there. I think, if I remember, this is kind of happiness for the most part. Now, it's, it's weird because I've always struggled with conveying happiness because it's like it can get caught between worry or anger for some weird reason. So when it, whenever you're trying to convey happiness, that's when you have to really utilize the mouth because the mouth will otherwise like show that they're smiling or whatever. I think for the most part, you need to make sure the eyebrows are actually straight. And then you need to maybe like have them smile. Yeah, so that's happiness. There you go. Or like smiling. Right? So. You gotta put into play how dramatic you have to be with these facial expressions because they can really help you add a lot of quality to your, uh, your animations, especially your facial characters. Now. Anger is another good one. Now, something that I cannot stress enough with ang with anger is that you have to bring the eyebrows down to the top of the eyelids as well. Because I've seen people not do that, and it just it doesn't look right. So, see how that- it looks kind of angry, but it doesn't look like a- it looks more like a cartoony angry, right? Like, it doesn't- it's something that you couldn't really take seriously, for the most part. This looks a little more serious. And then the more you bring the eyelids down, and now, again, something else that I, I learned throughout uh, animating is whenever you're trying to do expressions, only really mess with the top eyelids. Don't mess with bottom ones because the bottom ones will really kind of take away from like the intensity of an emotion. For s I don't know why it, 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 it does that, but it just doesn't look the same. So there, as you can see, that looks freaking like, like he's about to kill someone. <laughs> oh God. <coughs> but like, I'll show you what I mean. So let's say that uh, I took out, uh, I took, I brought up the eyebrows a little bit. Uh, let's, let's do this. So I'm gonna bring up everything a little bit. See how that doesn't look right? For, well, hold on. It doesn't look right. Just give me a second. I'll prove it. <laughs> okay, hold on. There we go. See, it just, it doesn't look the same. 
Like, it, there's something weird about the fact that it looks like he's Voldemort because of his long nose or something. So, I would typically just stick with this, where you bring the top eyelids down. I, I don't even use the bottom eyelids for blinking, honestly. I only use the bottom eyelids occasionally for, like, maybe when you're trying to convey a specific, like, tired emotion. But for the most part, it's always going to be wherever it was. Like that. Or, actually, sorry, I just realized there is actually a good way to convey um, happiness, but it does require the bottom eyelids for the most part. So, if you want to kind of show that, um, like, I, almost like squinting, like happiness kind of squinting, you can see that. See what I mean? Uh, let's do, let's do this. So let's, uh, let's change the eyebrows. To go happy, sort of. See? Bottom eyelids are good for that type of stuff. Now, otherwise, they're not really good for anything else. Um, another thing I would like to stress as well is that if you want to do a specific, uh, like, lead, like, if you want to really emphasize that they're happy, what you do is you try and get a circular uh, eyelid almost. Uh, kind of like what I'm about to do here. that and then color see now if I uh, hold on oh god no that's not it okay there we go see he looks happy right <coughs> it's more of like an anime style happy and it's like it's not really required to make it look happy but it better emphasizes the fact that they're happy i actually use this method in concept 5 for sure so this can also be used up top here kind of kind of like a down slash depressed mood sort of but i'd never use it like that because uh the eyebrows usually take care of stuff like that so so basically consider like those like cheeks so there's like cheeks on the bottom eyelids basically that make that emphasize like okay he's happy okay he's not happy or whatever but yeah uh is there anything i missed um <coughs> not real i don't think there's much i missed i'll be totally honest Yeah, I don't think there's anything else that I really need to cover. So, uh, one thing that I need to emphasize again is how you do their facial animations. So, um, again, don't be afraid to move the, uh, the eyes like a, the extra mile and like move them like slightly every like, every like half a second or so. Like they... Because you gotta think, you gotta think about how a real person's eyes would move. A good thing that I like to do is um, I like to film. Uh, like this is another way that I like to kind of figure out how I'm gonna do something is if I'm if I'm gonna have a character do a facial movement, like they look over to something, I like to film myself with my phone doing that said object or doing that said thing, and then analyze the video after and basically recreate it and maybe make it a little more like bouncy kind of like make it more at like but like uh exaggerated because animations are allowed to be exaggerated because well that's the best way to emphasize uh emotion in animation so <coughs> yeah um for the most part i think that covers a lot of everything doing with uh facial movements conveying emotions oh 
last thing tears now this is always a very 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 good thing to add i've been doing this since concept one uh it's probably the one of my oldest tricks in the book for facial animations and i'm surprised like not many people know how to do this one i think people do it's just that they never realized that it was as simple as this or maybe they're not talking about asking this but basically what I did what I just did if you watched is I got a cube and I parented it to the head and I shrunk it down to uh, basically just hang right under the eyelids right so now he has like tears kind of building up in his in his eyes essentially so that is a that's also a very helpful method if you're trying to convey that someone's like kind of on the verge of tears uh, I'd use that in basically every I think every reality concept I've made so far except for three yeah I haven't used it in three three and two I'm sorry no three and two are the only ones that I haven't used this method no I no I used it in two no, I did use it in two okay <coughs> um, yeah so uh, that's also a really good thing to do um, I bring it here so um, to go with these movements I am going to show you a good combination of making sad so that's that's kind of sad but remember the more you bring down the eyelids the more intense the look is so this is like kind of sad and then when you bring down the top eyelids they're like really sad so I will do that right now so now they're really sad and what I like to do sometimes is I like to go the extra mile and show that, basically show their their mouth open a little bit, like teeth, because it shows that they're like, they're tearing up themselves, like they're kind of, I don't know how to explain it, like, it it looks better, trust me, it looks better like when when there's more going on, but for the most part, it's uh. It's all about context, really. It's all about how you build up to set emotions or whatever. You can't just have someone instantly start crying on the spot. You have to have them kind of build up to the tears, sort of. So, um... Essentially, like, with with Skibs, I had him with a sad look before he actually started crying, essentially. So, he... he like, in Concept 5, I'm talking about, he was sad... Um, for example, uh, when he was trying to save James, he, in that one scene where he's like reaching out to him and then James like freaking flips. So when, when he's looking at James and he's about to salute, what happens is he's already in a sad state, but he doesn't have the tears welling up in his eyes. And you got to emphasize that you got to emphasize that he's sad before you put the tears in his eyes because it makes the tears much more dramatic and it makes it more, uh, like like oh wow like he's actually feeling like these emotions <clears throat> so what i did was i had him in that sad state and i had him close his eyes in shame and when he opened his eyes he had tears in them so that is that's a very good way to emphasize that someone is in a very painful state like they're very sad and um another good thing to do is to shake the pupils and i did that a lot in concept five now, I got that from watching some anime. <laughs> I got that from watching anime. It's a, it's a good technique. Um, I would recommend it for sure. Uh, don't shake them too much. Uh, but make sure they're, they're roughly, roughly a keyframe part. And again, that this uh, this eye shaking also really goes with um, with uh, what's it called? It goes with shocked looks as well, or like scared looks. And I did that a lot too in uh, some other ones as well. And I know I did that in concept two because there was a scene where uh, there was that scene where uh, James was getting tortured by Killu, and then he's like has a look of fear in his eyes, and it zooms in his eye, and he's like, it's like small and everything uh so let me just shrink the eye see 
eye shaking can really help emphasize like a like a really like in like a dramatic dramatic uh, extreme in emotion basically so extreme sad extreme sad and extreme scared right yeah and I think that just about covers anything if you guys want me to do any tutorial and anything else uh, let me know and I'll look into it and maybe I can do a tutorial on it maybe I can't but uh, for the most part that covers all the facial expressions that people requested me do a tutorial on that I used in concept 5 <coughs> so yeah be uh, yeah I hope this helped you guys and uh, I will see you another time uh, if you want a progress update on how concept 6 is going I have roughly four minutes of animation left in it. I am currently, uh, I can't say where I am, like I can't say like exactly what's going on because spoilers, but um, for the most part, uh, I'll take, I'm going to take a guess and I'm going to say that I'm going to get it out before Avengers 4 comes out. Um, not going to get it out before the trailer comes out because that trailer is supposed to come out within the next week or two from what I've heard. Uh, <coughs> but... Um, yeah, so Concept 6 will come out probably, probably I'd say in January-ish or maybe February-ish or maybe like I'd, I'd say that I'd be I'd be in the stage where I could upload the teaser that has the release date on it because whenever I upload a teaser with the release date on it, I've basically already finished Concept 6. It's just I need to add sounds to it. That's how I do my stuff. So I'll, I'll finish the animation and then I'll upload the teaser and then it'll like, and then it's just me splicing everything together during that period of time and everything. So I think what I'll do this time around is I'll do a, uh, a YouTube premiere because I have been waiting for a feature like that for so, such a long time. So I'm going to do a YouTube premiere for concept six. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'll, I'll give you more updates anytime I make another video. Um, what else can I say? Oh yeah, um, another thing about Concept6 is I actually have turned it into a collaborative project because I have a friend of mine, Vash, uh, Vash Animations, if you guys know him, he's, uh, he's helping me out with some of the parts in, uh, Concept6 that have, oh, I've, stuff that I've always struggled with, basically, and he offered to, uh, help me out with these things, so, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think you guys are really going to like Concept 6. There's a lot going on in it. Um, there was a lot of things that I was able to do in Concept 6 that I genuinely did not think I was going to be able to pull off. <coughs> um, and, uh, yeah, I just warning you guys right now, like, Concept 6 is going to be so, so, so much more uh, just... it. Everything about it is going to be so much more different from the uh the other ones and you guys are gonna love it i i just i know you guys are gonna love it so yeah um anyways if you guys want more updates on stuff that has to do with uh me or reality or whatever i have my discord in this description i also have my instagram which is literally just the tan james i'll occasionally post a meme or two on there but i never really use it that much uh and yeah i'll try and upload more videos but maybe not animations maybe like occasionally like funny moments with like my friends or whatever and uh yeah i'll see you guys another time <laughs>